Uh, one question regarding sure. the small tutorial that we had yesterday. Uh, someone asked me for the surface hopping paper, like we talked about the surface hopping. Can you either text or say who, who, was who she was? Because uh, I think I, <laughs> I sent the papers to the wrong person. So, <laughs> wait, it was. It was uh, uh, one question uh, regarding the small tutorial that we had. Uh, who, me? Because I cannot see who talked because I'm sharing the screen. So, Ah, okay, perfect. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, then I will send them to you uh, later, okay? And uh, then then the other the other small thing is uh, for the computer too. So the one the 1502443744 in the tutorial in the tutorial, I actually wrote TCCM stud two, but it should be tutorial the the end for entering. Okay, so it's always a tutorial uh, at and then the the IP. All right. So if you look in the tutorial uh, PDF, it's a bit different, but in in this case is is tutorial like the first like the first tutorial. All right. So. Uh, then, then I th guess we can start and welcome, welcome everyone. So today's lecture, today's tutorial will be about umbrella sampling. So now I've already shared the screen. So let's please go, let's go to the, the slides. And uh, so the idea of today is actually to, first of all, we will obtain a legal structure from the Zinc database, which is a, which is a database for uh, uh, used for docking, so but I will show you now. Then we build the solvated system. So we run classical dynamics. So the first, those first three steps will be the same as in the first tutorial. And then from step four, we will actually do something relatively new, which will be running umbrella sampling, and then uh, obtain the potential of mean force for our system. So I will not talk too much about the system, but I will just show that the system of today will be the thermal isomerization of azobenzene going from the trans to the cis. So from the planar state to, uh, to the cis state, All right? So I think that, okay, no, this is, there is this other slide before we go to the terminals. For these tutorials, actually, you just need the Amber tools and VMD. You don't need any QM uh, uh, software and then this is where you can download the PDF for, for the tutorial of today. And uh, to, to conclude, then this PDF that you will download, plus this video that we're making right now, will be enough to reproduce it, to reproduce the, the, the full tutorial also at your house with your, with your computer, all right? So in principle, those two things together should be enough. So we can uh, we can start. Therefore, I will go to the I will go to the tutorial, to the terminal. Sorry, I think I will zoom a little bit. Wait, no, that's too much for me. Then, the, is it enough? Is it okay? I, I guess so. So let's enter our uh, our computers. The first nine or ten people. The first one. The other one. The other one. Okay, so let's go to data and uh, in tutorial. Now, again, we will have tutorial samples. Please uh, stop me if uh, I'm going too fast or uh, for any reason. Otherwise, if you get lost, then it's annoying. Here we will have this uh, uh, two umbrella, which is the folder of the today's tutorial. So we copy this two umbrella in our own folder minus r okay and now let's go to our own folder so go to two umbrella and one second gustavo did you talk did you did you tell me anything 
Gustavo. I'm here. Sorry. Yes, I, I just saw. Did you send me a message? Uh, yes. Could you access the your computer? Yep. Okay. Okay. So everything is fine. Sí, sí, sí. Yeah. Okay. 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 Great. Uh, then, all right. So, uh, let's begin. So, first of all, we will have our initial structure, and the initial structure we will be getting it, as I said, from Zinc, from the Zinc database. So, I will open it here, and I will show you how to download it. Let's wait. Zinc database. Otherwise, <laughs> we will not find the correct one. So now here. This is basically a database of all the commercially available compounds. Uh, it's mostly used for virtual screening and molecular docking so that you can directly download your three-dimensional structure, which I believe that is already optimized at a QM level. So it's a good starting structure if you just want to do docking. And uh, usually, like I just build it myself on IQMOL or uh, Avogadro or whatever software, but in this case, but in this case, I will show you this uh, approach since sometimes you have really large molecules of 80, 100 atoms. And most of the times you can also find it here. Therefore, we search for our azobenzene. And here it is. So here we download it. And I will download the mold 2 file. Now, in this situation, I already have it in. Uh, I already have it in my in in the correct folder. Therefore, I will not do it. So now, we will go again to our folder. Okay, and so we will be doing the same similar steps to the previous time. So the first thing is that let's open it and uh, let's observe it. This is a bit too large. Okay, so. Uh, the structure looks fine, uh, but just to be sure and also to add the, the correct charges, let's do as always the same procedure, which is antechamber minus E this file, minus F E the mole two, then minus O league.com, minus F O league dot, uh, sorry. GCRT, so the Gaussian uh, coordinate file. We created, we created, and now again uh, we go from the XYZ file, so this file, okay. We rerun antechamber minus e league.com minus fe uh, GCRT, then minus o mold uh, league dot mol2 minus fo mol2 okay and then minus c which uh, if we remember from last time was the the the, um, the extension for the charges actually before we run let's do again ante chamber minus l and we see what uh, what we need so we will actually be doing this same empirical method to obtain the charges. So we will be writing minus C uh, BCC, because if you do again ante chamber minus H, this is all the relative, all the options that we can use. And here at the end is written, those are the mandatory files. So minus E and minus, uh, minus I, sorry, minus O, minus FI, minus FO. And then also the minus C, which is related to the charge method. And in order to have the correct atom types, we will, we will also be using minus 80 atom type. All right. So let's go again to the one antechamber minus E league.com minus FE GCRT minus O league.mol2 minus FO. Uh, mol2 and uh, minus c b c c and minus 80 gaff so now he's calculating he's doing the same empirical calculation it's done and now we have our leak dot mol2 
now we're sure that the atom types, which are those ones, are understood by the following uh, T leap. And therefore, now before we go to the T leap, we will be doing again this PARM CHK2 minus C uh, leak dot mol2 minus F mol2 and minus O minus O uh, leak dot FRC mode. Okay. And as I said the uh, previous time, this is. Uh, an extra file which uh, contains few parameters which are not in the force field. And this is required in order to create the topology file with TLIP in the next step. So until now, everything is fine, I guess. Please tell me if, you're, uh, uh, if you need something because I don't want then that anyone stays behind. Okay, so I will continue. Now again, let's copy our lig files into the next folder then, which is tlib. Okay, and let's open this tlib system dot in which is the uh, input file for our TLIP uh, solvation. So if we notice this time, we only have the GAF2, which is for the organic molecules. This is the force field for the organic molecules. And this one is the force field for the water molecules and also the ions. So uh, we will be uh, calling with mole, with the variable mole, we will be doing this action, which is load the mol2 parameter, the mol2 file. So we we'll, uh, we'll load this leak.mol2, then we load the parameter, the extra parameters. We save the library of this uh, uh, for the ligand. And then we say solvate, please solvate with the octahedral box, my molecule and the water. And this one, which I did not specify in the previous tutorial, uh, this number 10 uh, is equal basically to the distance between the last atom of our residue or protein, if we have a protein, to the end of the box, all right? So this means that uh, the farthest uh, part of our residue will be 10 Armstrong from the end of the octahedral box. Then we save the Amber parameters and we save the PDB. Okay, so let's see if it works. Okay, it worked, it was much faster than last time. And now system.pdb. Okay, so here we have our molecule and then we only have the waters. This time will be only 1,500 atoms. So also the calculations will be much faster. We only have 486 residues, okay? Then before we send everything to our uh, minimization folder, let's open the system for PDB. So this is the system that we just created. Let's again, make it visually more appealing. Uh, sorry, uh, Vito? Yes. Uh, could you repeat how did you uh, run the uh, TLIP, please? How, how to run <laughs> I, TLIP, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah I, I forgot how to run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Thanks. So TLIP minus F and then your input file, okay? Okay, thanks, <laughs> thanks. So I uh, will run it again. So, or otherwise you do it if you, you want to do it uh, uh, interactively, you can also do everything through the, through the TLIP. So you source the source lip rc.gov to, and then you continue. But uh, yeah, the thing is with TLIP, you're, you create the file once, twice, three times, and then you most probably will be the same file for most of the systems. So this is why TLIP is something that you actually forget because you iterate it at the beginning once or two times and then it goes away. Now, uh, okay, let's thanks. again 
do the VMD. Yes, okay. Again, this is just to, for visualization, there is no purpose in doing this, but just to, uh, so we learned that we can call only our molecule by uh, writing the rest name and the name of the molecule. And then here in this way, we will only uh, change the things we want to change in this representation. So, and then, uh, yeah, here you can write only water, I think, yes. And then you can change, I don't know, like this. All right, this is now, we need to minimize it and, uh, and, and start the simulation. So let's close VMD. And now let's copy our system. Vito, yes. There is a question for you in the chat. So I believe that uh, you need to specify it. Let's try. Let's try one second. If we don't specify, let's see what happens. I believe that. Uh, sorry. Someone talk? No. Okay. So let's let's try like this. I believe that uh, Solvay talk requires two variables plus a number. But uh, let's see what happens. Yes, if we see, we need the solute, the solvent, and then we actually need a number. Okay. Therefore, you need to specify the, the this number. So let's change it otherwise. And this number, in principle, should be. Uh, if you remember during the simulation, we specify a cutoff. Cut off. Therefore, this number uh, should be larger than the cutoff that we specify. Okay. Actually, Quanco, one, uh, one small question. Uh, yesterday, we discussed about this thing of the cutoff. So, because I couldn't answer one thing, um, the, this. This cutoff corresponds only to the residue of also to the waters. So, in, in the sense that if you specify now this, uh, uh, so is the cutoff for all the all the water molecules as well? Yes, the cutoff you specify in the input, you mean? Yes, because let's say that the because the question that arose was, uh, since uh, here you have to specify the cutoff. Uh, you need to specify the size of the box. And in principle, this size of the box should be larger than the cutoff, okay? Yes. Does it, so, like, what is the- Because, so, so- You want the molecules, to, the waters to interact. Okay, please go, sorry. <laughs> no, uh, so th th this is the distance the, here in Tilip, that's the distance between any atom of the solute and the last water molecule in the box, right? This tank answer. Okay. And then uh, the cutoff you use in the simulation is the cutoff, uh, is the radius of the, of the sphere where you are computing the Leonard Jones interaction. And yes. this has to be, this cutoff in the simulation has to be a smaller than the size of the box because otherwise, you are taking into account interactions of one molecule with itself in the periodic okay, so boundary. It's for it, for it, it's, uh, okay. It's with yeah. itself, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, so it has to be larger. The, the, the box has to be larger than the cutoff. Yeah. Okay, so in principle here, if you would write, so imagine the cutoff is eight, okay? But here, if you, you would write five, will still be working in principle because the, the distance between a molecule and the next and itself should be 10. Uh, yes, maybe. Also, you need to consider that when you run the calibration, the, the box reduce a bit the volume to, okay. to, adjust, to adjust to, you know, to get the right density. All right. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, this was also to answer the question of yesterday. So now let's continue. Then let's copy our system. Uh, in run and uh, minimization, okay? And let's open run min.
Okay. The, the, the input file is similar to the previous tutorial. This time I, incre I increase the number of steps. This is the total amount of uh, steps. And then after a thousand steps, um, we will go from, uh, we will go to steepest descent uh, algorithm and we will print the energies every two steps, all right? So now let's remember what was the nomenclature to run the simulation. So it was Sander minus E min dot E, wait, minus I, always I forget. So first of all, let's check those, those files before we run the simulation. This was the topology file, which contains all the atom types, the charge, and all the parameters for uh, of our uh, of our system. And this one is the coordinate file, all right? Which has the x y z coordinates of all the molecules in our uh, system plus the box dim dimension. So let's go now. Sander minus i min dot i minus p. We need the topology. Minus c. We need the system dot rst. Minus r. We specify the input that we want the output that we want to create our restart file. And minus o min dot out. And minus inf min dot info and we run it in principle this should be very fast let's see it's already doing 600 steps so in few seconds it will be done if there is any other question please vito in tutorial you we have a minus o a bigger o option ah that's correct thank you uh, yeah uh, so the minus o here at the beginning i forgot is uh, in order to uh, so imagine that now I rerun this simulation without the minus O. Let's see what happens. So uh, basically, it's not working. You see, it's because uh, the minus O, what it does is it uh, allows Sander to overwrite the file with the same name in the same folder. Okay. So if okay. I now I would have run again without this minus O, the simulation would have. Uh, not occurred because uh, because of this reason. Okay, so this allows uh, you're telling Sander to to overwrite all the files, right? So let's say that if you do it at the first time without any files inside, you will be working. But imagine that you make a few a small mistake and you want to rerun the simulation. You you need this minus O in order to run it properly. Okay. So now in principle, let's see, this is our structure. This is our uh, output. We see that from the beginning. The energy was minimized because if we go at the end, now I will show you the, for the equilibration, we will open actually the output. So we reached more or less uh, a lower uh, energy and uh, should be at the minimum in order to actually see it we should plot it and but now let's copy our system dot parm7 in the eating so we start doing the we eat up the system and then we copy the uh, min dot restart file in the eating okay so let's go in the eating and open the input file. So here we have, uh, we, we will be doing a simulation of 1,000, uh, 10,000 steps with an, um, the time step of two femtoseconds. We will allow to apply the shake approximation and we will go from a temperature of zero to a temperature of 300 degrees stepwise. And this stepwise will be defined by these uh, these two lines here. So we're telling the system to go from from step zero to step eight thousand from a value of zero to three hundred. Okay, and then 
we want to uh, keep the system at this temperature from step 8,000 to step 10,000, okay? For the previous system, if we remember, this did not work because we used not enough steps and the system was really large. In principle, with this system, see both this heating and also the production run later on will be working properly, okay? So let's run the simulation. So again, thunder minus O minus I mean dot in minus P system. Dot perm seven minus C system. No, sorry. Mean dot restart. Then minus R it dot R S D seven minus X. So now we want also the uh, full uh, trajectory. Heat dot C R D minus O eat dot out and minus inf eat dot info. And let's run the simulation. Probably this will take one or two minutes. We can do tail minus F and our output to see the simulation how it's running, we, we can actually also observe live the temperature that is increasing. Let's see if at 8,000 steps, it will reach the 300, the 300 Kelvin and keep the same temperature. Okay, the simulation is almost done. Very good. So the simulation finished. So now let's do the, let's use our Perl script in order to extract the information from our output. And let's plot, for example, again, the summary dot temp and we see how the temperature increased we saw it now live in the output but let's just plot it this time and we see that in the in the last period there is in the last part there is a, a convergence in the value of the temperature okay so let's close it and now let's see the total energy then you can also observe other observables, but those two should be enough. Also here, it behaves, of course, like the temperature. So uh, we reached uh, a converged value and therefore we can continue with our production run and move from uh, our MBT ensemble to an MPT ensemble. So let's copy the system.parm into the production folder. Let's copy as well the, uh, what was it? It.rst dot in the production. And let's go inside the production. Everything fine? Yes. Yes. Okay. Nice. So here now in this folder, Unfortunately, before I forgot actually to make a slide where I was showing the architecture of the tutorial, probably maybe I will do it at the end, especially for the people that are watching the channel, because uh, I think uh, with that slide, if you do a screenshot of that slide, you can understand uh, what is the structure of the, of the folders. Okay, so here we have, we will be doing a production run. And then there are these two folders, which are, let's say, the new part that we will be doing. So the umbrella sampling and also the constrained production run. So for now, let's run the production. This may take a little bit more because we, I want to reach a converged value for the density. So we will actually be running for 40,000 uh, steps. 
which I believe this is eight picoseconds or 80 actually. And uh, this time we will do, we will use E rest equal one and NTX equal seven because we will be uh, doing a rest. We will be reading the restart file and we want to keep the same velocities as before. Then this NTB now is uh, equal to two because we're applying the uh, MPT ensemble. And then those are the keywords for the pressure control the cutoff of eight those are again the shake approximation uh, keywords those are the just the printing output uh, in this e wrap in principle this should wrap the coordinate into the primary box let's see if it works or not so we can start the simulation therefore we do sander minus o minus e Rod.in minus p system dot perm seven minus c eat dot rst minus r rod dot rst seven minus c rod dot crd minus o rod dot out minus inf rod dot info and we no and we we run it. Ah, I made a mistake, of course. So here should be not minus x, should be minus x. Because the minus c was actually reading it twice. Ah, sorry, okay, I will go slower, yes. So, so okay, no, no, you're running. So, okay. Uh, Great, so I will redo this Sander command. Maybe I will not run it, run it. I'm still on the last step. Okay, so you're in the you're in the step of the production run, right? Or in the previous of the eating. Okay, you're in the eating. So okay, let's wait a few minutes. Yeah, please thank you for telling me that I'm going too fast. So, okay, we see, we can see now all the summaries that the, this uh, per script has created. And uh, then what, let me think, what can I show you in the meantime? Let's uh, do some CPP trajectory in the meantime to and create so let's do the trash in it dot crd we want i will take just one uh, just one frame and do probably i will image it auto image and we put in the center of our image uh, the mole so our molecule and then we do trash out it dot pdb we just want to see how it looks okay so let's if open it dot pdb sorry did anyone talk seems to be an alien from uh, yeah yeah you heard it too okay it's not that they hear voices okay <laughs> nice okay then this is the yeah this is the eaten you can see that the box is not as uh, before the minimization so the as uh, Juanco said also now the we're eating the system and so the box dimensions are changing but I, I believe that actually the box dimension will change when we apply when we're in the P and PT ensemble. So, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Gabriella, uh, what is the, are you still, are you in the eating? Because just tell me so that I can. Uh... Okay, okay, then uh, I will uh, slowly continue. So I believe now I have already run the simulation, but I will show you again how to do it. So if for people that are in the eating still, so go to the eating and copy the system and also to the production and then also copy the eat.rst7 to the production. So the topology and the restart file. Let's go to the production. So in the prod.info, we will be seeing what is the estimate time remaining and then also how many nanoseconds is doing per day with this system. So there are here, there are some uh, nice infos, especially if you have a really large system that uh, could run for two, three, four days, at least you understand when the simulation will end. You see what is the current situation. This is the just the final step is not the average. So again, this uh, command for the production is minus O minus I prod dot in minus p system dot perm seven minus c system no sorry eat dot rst minus r prod dot rst seven minus x prod dot crd and minus inf minus o because we want also the out prod dot out and minus inf prod dot info okay i will not execute it because it's already it's still running so otherwise i will overwrite it since we have the minus o but i will keep it here we'll put this on in front ah, actually it will finish in the same time okay so so let's see product dot out. Let's see if it finished correctly. So 40,000 steps, the average temperature is 200 and almost 299, close enough to 300. Now we see, now we will plot again, process MD out and then prod dot out. Let's plot, for example, again, now the, the total energy. No, summary. We see that also here it reached the convergence. Here we're then we can observe our density. I believe that there is also the density here, yes. Yeah. So we see that the density reached, so the system got in an equilibrated uh, style after more or less one, uh, eight, 10, so four fifths of the simulation. So, uh, and then for the last part, so let's say in principle, this is the part where you should start taking your data and taking it for the analysis if you want to do analysis afterwards. Okay, so finally, we, we actually observed an equilibrated system. So, sorry, uh, when you're using process mdout, you used what file? Uh, the dot out file? Yeah, if I, yeah, basically, I think wait. Let's and the what was the name? Perl. Okay, process. Yeah, okay, this one. Okay. Yeah, it takes the dot out files. So I believe that uh, actually never open this <laughs> this file. Number tools. 
so uh, is accessible to everyone, I believe. And so it works with the output file and uh, is able to extract all the data from the output file. Yes, it's always it only works with the dot out because this is where there is only this is where there is the data itself, not trajectory nor anything else, but just the data itself. So the the energy and the bonding interaction and and the and on and on. Okay. So let me know if we if I can continue. Otherwise, we can either do a short break. And then uh, the next part should be this tutorial in principle will be, hopefully we will be finishing in one hour. So it will not be, uh, yeah, okay. Then uh, we can do a short break and then the next part will be another 40, 45 minutes probably. So in the meantime, you can finish this production run also for the people that uh, maybe in the computer, in their own laptop in the, from the YouTube channel. Uh, it's slightly slower than uh, this computer. And then we can uh, meet up again in five minutes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs>
Danilo, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, so I was actually checking the manual, but uh, right now I cannot find it. Um, therefore, I will check more in depth all the keywords and let you know I've never uh, done it. So, done. <laughs> uh, Gustavo, are you there? No, okay, then. Anyways, uh, if you're all ready, then or I'll wait other few minutes, maybe, and then we can continue. Hey, it's just a curiosity. <laughs> yes, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I never actually used it, so, but I would probably... Um, like, usually what I do in, the, in these kind of situations, uh, I don't know if you have the PDF, it's called the number 20, is the manual. And it's, it's quite, I, I like the way it's organized because in, uh, I think is uh, let's see, it's called, in the chapter called uh, running simulation, the first is Sander. So the, uh, so in page 336, and then there you find all the possible keywords that you can use in the, in the simulation. I will find it for you, but uh, yeah, in case like you want to change the setup and uh, change a few things, I believe that the best thing is to go through this uh, this chapter, let's say, which goes from 336 to for the next see, 30, 40 pages. Vito, but uh, 
Well, the question is, uh, what, what do they, what does he mean with the dielectric version? So a continuum solvation or what? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think. So. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, I've never the... done it, so that's why. You... Yeah. So yeah, th th this is a keyword just in the in the input file. Oh, I mean, you don't need to solve the system first. So you, you don't solve the system, and then so you, you have your molecule in, in vacuum. Let's say the, the the ligand or the protein, and then in the input file in the dot in, uh, there is a a keyword to add uh, implicit solvation. I mean, if you Google for, uh, by the way. Uh, if you Google Amber tutorials, maybe you can do it, Vito, uh, just to yes to show. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, click. There is one which is about uh, DNA. Uh, yes. Look, thank look you. for. Yeah. yeah. DNA. No, this one. No. Uh, I think uh, no. It's only about uh, DNA. Let me see my computer. So it's in the section five, uh, yes. five point two. Yeah, 5.2, simulating a DNA. Yeah, this one. So and if you go, if you scroll down and go to section two. Wait, I will zoom a little bit. Yeah. Creating, okay, here is the generating, this is the T-lip, okay. Build the bottom top. Yeah, so you need to go to section four. So you need to click next until section four. Ah, okay. Okay, thought. Then, yeah. Okay, and okay, there is right. the implicit solving and stuff. And if you scroll down a bit, uh, so, wait, sorry, no, just uh, the, the first input file which appears uh, in the Oh, okay, here, yeah. yes. So the ah, EJB, yeah, EGB. this is the, the implicit solvation keyword. And you have different numbers you can read in the manual because in Amber uh, there are several implicit solvents uh, ah, available. Okay. And one is just one of them, maybe it's the, the Bohr method. Yeah, it is written. Yeah, the, this uh, is probably the generalized Bohr method. Yeah, but you also have some of them developed by Trular, the, the, Poisson, the Poisson method yeah. also. Yeah, there are several ones. Mm, okay, yeah, because I think you need to define the, the electric constant or the conductor constant of the environment. By default, by default is water, but uh, yeah, then you have additional keywords to, to define the solvent, and also you can include uh, ionic strength if you want. Mm -hmm. So there are additional keywords, but yeah, probably it is better if you if you go to the manual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Thanks. But by default, I think uh, by default you have water, and also by default uh, the the solvent automatically neutralizes your system because, as you know, yeah. the system has to be neutral. So, I think uh, the, the solvent automatically adds the the implicit charges to neutralize your system. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I think you can you can choose, for example, the the ionic strength because also in MMGBSA uses the same uh, keywords for the now I just yeah. realized this IGB is the same yeah. as MM in MMGBSA. Mm -hmm. So okay indeed that's one last thing. Uh, Danilo this yeah. is a good tutorial to 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 perform if you want this DNA one where you run first explicit solvation uh, dynamics and then implicit ones and also they run in, in vacuum uh, just you know for fun. So I think it is a good tutorial to to do at home. Let's say <laughs> I will I will copy the link in the the Zoom session. Okay, good. Please. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, go go ahead, Danny. Yes. Uh, just a, uh, like, like a comment slash question in that regard. If you perform simulations with that uh, implicit solvent. You don't use periodic boundary conditions, do you? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Uh, I think it would. No, no, you don't use periodic boundary conditions. You don't, right? Yeah. 
in theory the implicit solvent is uh, let's say infinite so you, you don't need them okay but uh, yeah you don't need to specify them if this is the question yeah yeah okay. yeah because uh, because otherwise you you would in principle be either doing nothing or in the worst case scenario considering the interactions of the solid it's within itself with itself right? mm. okay yeah Well, I believe that unless we have other questions, we can continue with the, with the tutorial. And uh, all right, so we're here in prod, okay? There is a question in the chat, Vito. Oh, okay, one second. About, yes. uh, about the density from the out file. I don't know what this but, is about. Probably wait, I don't, know. Where is the... Uh, I, can I can we also I can grab the density? In the... Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so actually, uh, so. Ah, you can, uh, of course. Uh, so, as I said before, there is this script which is also in number tools, so it's accessible to everyone, which uh, creates uh, those uh, creates those uh, those files. Okay, so it outputs all those files. One second, because it's annoying me this thing. Okay. And within all those files, there is also the density. So let's see if there is, yes. So you can, uh, there is the average, there is the RMS, and also the, the density throughout the full simulation. So we can plot it uh, with your favorite tool for plotting, as I showed before. And then we see that uh, the, the system has reached the correct density of, for the, at the end of the simulation. Okay, so as I said, this is the part where we should start uh, doing analysis of our system. Okay, so then, so now, until now, we've uh, basically uh, recreated the tutorial one, but with a slightly different system, more simple, with the, only the ligand and not the protein. Now, from now on, we will I will add a few other. Uh, things to our uh, knowledge and uh, in order to do so let's open the uh, folder called 180 and the, the purpose of uh, this next simulation will be to teach you how to do a constrained simulation so let's open the prod.in so the prod.in file is exactly the same as before but it contains these keywords at the end. Those keywords at the end are telling us to read this file that I will just show you right now and uh, to output this file, okay? And to output the this file, which will be the dihedral every 50 steps. I believe that it's better if I show you first the other file, which is this, this ang.180, which must be in the same folder of your prod.in, okay? Let's open it. And so this, uh, this is uh, a small section which is telling us that we're applying a restraint to our simulation. So this uh, IAT is, uh, defines the index for the atoms. So we want to apply this restraint to atom four, five, six, and seven, okay? Now, how do we want, to, how do we choose those atoms? Because the purpose of uh, this uh, restraint simulation will be to apply a uh, force constant on the dihedral of the central, uh, uh, on the, of the central atoms. So the C, N, and C. In order to understand which are the atoms, I usually uh, do this. So uh, let's see if we here we have a PDB. No. So let's go to the mean, okay? Let's go to min, because I believe here we have the PDB. Let's open the system.pdb, but no, let's open it with VMD. So I will show you how I would do this. Either you can do it from the PDB structure itself or through VMD, I think is better.
So since we want to just uh, work with our ligand, we can remove the water. So, so we do rest name mol, and let's make it a bit nicer. Okay, so let's do zoom a little bit. Here we have our uh, molecule. Now, if we go here on the query, this is a function of VMD in which whatever you click, it will give you information of those. So now I click on this four. Now, uh, this is the information that came out. So the C4 is index three. The C uh, the N1 is index four. The N2 is index five, and the C5 is in this index six. Now, it's quite funny because uh, th this is what I wanted to show you, but in the same time, VMD has an indexing of minus one compared to the PDB files. So, which this means that actually the number three here, wait, let's see, the number three here will correspond to index four in our PDB and, and so on for all of those. I wanted to tell you this because sometimes I got mistaken because I was looking through VMD and then I was looking again in the PDB file and things were not matching. So I think since they're programmed in two different ways, one starts from zero and one starts from one for the indexing. Therefore, now let's keep in mind the C4, for example, and let's keep in mind that C4 in VMD corresponds to index three, okay? So let's, uh, let's exit VMD. Now let's open the system.pdb. Now, if we see now C4, corresponds to index four, okay? Therefore, since uh, CPP trajectory works with the indexing of the PDB, we should uh, be taking index four, index five, index six, and index seven in order to define the dihedral of the central atom, atoms, okay? So let's go back to our uh, folder of before, which is in prod, Oh, sorry, Rod, I will zoom a little bit. Okay, CD 180. And let's open again this, this ang 180. So again, the index are of atom four, five, six, and seven. And uh, here what we do is uh, uh, Amber, in order to apply an harmonic potential, requires to uh, apply actually two potentials and the sum of those two potential will be a central harmonic potential at the center of the two uh, potential i'm telling you this because what we have here we here we have the first potential goes from r1 to r2 which corresponds to rk2 okay so we have a, a potential of 200 k cal per mole between R1 and R2. So between 60 degrees and 180 degrees. And then we have another potential which starts at R3 and goes to R4, also of 200 K cal per mole. Now the sum of these two potentials together will be centered in 180. Therefore, in order to have uh, an harmonic potential, we need usually to have those two uh, equal, in this case for a dihedral, in, let's imagine, then this one equidistant from the central dihedral, and then those should be the same value because uh, the, in order to have it uh, perfectly in the center and the, the same, we need, it, we need to have the same force constant. So what we will be doing here is applying a force constant of 200 uh, kcal per mole at, the, at, the, at those four atoms in order to uh, restrain the position of our dihedral. Therefore, in principle, we will be able to uh, block the dihedral so that it will not oscillate as much as if, we is, as if it's not restrained since we have a force constant applied. Therefore, let's copy. Let's run this simulation. And then I'll show you other few things. 
prod.rst, we copy it here. Okay, and then let's copy as well the system.parm7 and we copy it here. Okay, and let's run the simulation. So sander minus O minus I prod.in. Okay, then minus P system.parm7 minus C uh, prod.rst7 minus R. Let's call it prod180.rst7 in order to distinguish it from the other one. Then minus x prod180.crd. Then minus o prod180.out. Uh, and then minus inf prod180.info. And let's run it. Peter, it's EST7 or RST7? Mm, ah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made a mistake. In principle, uh, sin, the, since Amber, uh, like the minus R of Amber implies that we want to be printing uh, an R RST file. Okay. So, in principle, now this file that is called EST is correct. Okay. So, the simulation will not stop. So the simulation actually occurred and finished already because we only had 1,000 steps. So, but to be consistent, let's change this prod180.est to prod180.rst7. Thank you very much. Okay, so now uh, what we have more compared to the previous simulation, we actually have this file, this dihedral.180. And we see that, okay, the first, so since we took the first simulation, the first, uh, uh, sorry, the restart file from the previous simulation, the restart, in the restart file, the dihedral actually was around 180. So the, you see that this is the first one. And then we see that now the uh, value of our dihedral is oscillating with around 180, okay? Now, let's compare these values to our previous simulation where we did not apply our restraint, okay? So in order to do so, we can use our CPP trajectory in order to print out the file containing the dihedrals, okay? So we do CPP trajectory. We load our topology file as always, system.parm7. Then we we do traj in prod.crd, okay? From, I don't remember how many times I printed, but let's print them all because I don't remember. No, actually, since uh, I think it was from one to 2000, and let's print it every 10 steps, okay? Because uh, I was, yeah, okay. No, it was actually at 200. So, okay, so let's keep it to 200. CPP trudge, trudge in prod.crd. Sorry. Parm system dot parm seven, then trudge in prod.crd. Then we do the action command dihedral for. Did I write it correctly this time? Yes, four, then five, six, and seven. Out, dihedral, dot out. Now this, I forgot again to uh, add the range 360 uh, keyword. No, so now I, pro I probably think that the output will be between one minus 180 and 180, but let's compute it. Or actually, no, let's print another one. Four, five, six, and seven, then range 360 out. 
dihedral dot dihedral 360 <laughs> dot out. Okay, now the output range this time is from zero to 360. Now we compute these uh, commands by saying go. Well, it's really fast. Then we do exit. So let's open dihedral 360 dot out. Okay, wait, I need to zoom out because I cannot see. Okay, so we see that now the dihedral in this case where we did not apply any restraint um, is actually oscillating. In principle, the equilibrium geometry of the aldobenzene is around 180, but due to the sampling and uh, the, you see how the dihedral is oscillating between 170 and uh, sometimes even 200. Okay, so now let's open this file together by using dot vs, double dot vs, but this is, you don't need to do it. You can also just look at it and go in the folder 180 and open it together with the dihedral dot dot, okay? We see that in this situation where we applied our uh, uh, constraint, we, all, we have a much more precise, precise uh, dihedral oscillating around 180 compared to the unrestrained simulation, okay? This was just to show you. Okay, so now what is the purpose now? Now we will be running umbrella sampling, okay? So what we want to do is now, instead of estimating the free energy of our end state, which in this case was uh, the equilibrium geometry of our system at uh, around 180, uh, of the dihedral. Now we want to find the difference in free energy between two, two states, or in this case, throughout the full pathway, okay? So what we want to do is to actually, uh, in order to find the, the difference in free energy between these two states, we want to compute the energy in the points where the distributions of those, uh, in this case, this dihedral, uh, intersect, okay? And this is why we apply umbrella sampling. Uh, in this case, for example, we need to know our reaction coordinate in advance. Therefore, our starting reaction coordinate will be 1,180 degrees, while our final reaction coordinate, let's suppose, will be zero degrees. So we'll do a full rotation, okay? Therefore, now let's open the windows. And here we have our umbrella sampling uh, script. So this is a bash script with, no, you cannot see like this, but okay. So what we will be doing, we will be doing a constrained simulation starting from our initial state, which is 180. And with a delta of minus three, so we will be printing, we will be doing a simulation at each minus three uh, the hydra, so 180, 177, 174, 171, 168, and so on, okay? And until, and we will be doing this for 60 times. So if we multiply this 60 by minus three is minus 180. So we will be running from 180 to zero, okay? Now, what, in order to have a better, uh, distribution and especially uh, a better intersect between the distribution, we will be running the, we will not be running sequential simulations, but we will only run a simulation from the rest file, restart file of the previous simulation. So what this script does, this script prints out this, this one, which is the md.in file, okay? And then we'll run Sander sequentially. So it will do the standard, the, the simulation at 180 degrees. Finish up the simulation, take the restart file of the 180 degrees and run the 177 degrees and so on and so on until zero, okay? I believe that this simulation will take five, six minutes. So in the meantime, if there is questions we can discuss. So now I will run it. In order to run it, the file requires this, ini.r1 uh, 
which in this case R1 will be 180. Therefore, I think what we will be doing is we first of all we copy as always our topology file and we copy it here. Okay. Then let's go to our constraint simulation and let's copy our prod 180.rst7. But let's copy it in order to follow the script since I did not change anything. Let's call it ini180.rst. The extension rst7 or rst in this case is the same. So don't worry if it's different. Okay. And let's copy it like this. So now, in principle, we will be running this umbrella sampling for 1000 steps for those 60 simulations. So let's execute this command. I will put a no up in front and then this one so that it will run in background. And the simulation is running. Let's do top to see if it's actually running. Yes. I think this is me, I believe. And so you see how now it will take, uh, I think, five, six minutes. So now we, what it did for now, it printed out the md.in. It started a simulation and it printed out the md.out, then uh, printed out the ini.180 uh, and so on. So now if you see, if you do ls all the time, you will see that slowly things will increase. Now, just to be sure that is actually printing the correct file and is not actually giving me any mistakes, let's open a few of them. So, so we see that the total is the, is the final line of the, our, uh, our uh, correct file, let's say. We can do tail, I think it minus, minus N1 of MD of dot out, probably like this, yes. So we see that the simulations are actually uh, continuing. And is also printing this dihedral, let's open, for example, 180 dot out. So it's printing this file, okay. This is a file that is oscillating in a constraint simulation between 180, uh, uh, yeah, at 180. Then let's open, in the meantime, around another random one. Let's open the dihedral dot 165, for example. We see that now instead that this will be around 165, okay. Vito, could you repeat how do you run the shell command? Uh, the shell command uh, is so in principle, no up means it's a, it's a keyword that uh, uh, let you uh, print out uh, a file called the no up, no up dot out. That in this case, since there is no errors, uh, is actually not giving anything. But here, let's say it's a, it prints out the, the a possible error, let's say. and that's so it's, I usually I do no up usually then you execute it as a bash command like this. Okay. And then I put the ampersand, I think it's called this, uh, this letter here uh, in order to run the simulation in background, because if you don't put this, uh, uh, this symbol, it will, uh, let's say your terminal will be blocked because it's running the simulation. So if you okay. want to continue working and doing other things, uh, you will uh, you will need to open another terminal. Okay. Okay. Sometimes. Uh, in the, yes? Okay. In, in the total, how many simulation? Uh, do you so in do? the total, it will be sixty simulations. Okay. So it will be this. Uh, so it starts from uh, at one, and it will print. The limit is sixty. So it will uh, print, uh, will do 60 simulations of, of the always minus three of the day of the dihedral. Okay. Okay. So in this case, if we see, uh, let's see. So let's see what it did. So for example, it printed out the script with printed out this file 
which is our uh, simu which is our starting uh, input file. Exactly the same as before. You see, but this time it's printing every one step. You now let's open, for example, this uh, dihedral dot dot, which correspond to the this ang one eighty the uh, file of before. So let's open vi dihedral one eighty dot dot. So, for example, here is applying a potential at 180, still up to 100, okay? So those files, so we'll sequentially, so now we, we saw the 180. Now let's see the dihedral 177 dot dot. So it's always, here is always shifting here by, by three and here by uh, five. Yes, yeah, by five, because uh, let's say that we're in the range. So we are applying our first potential from 172 to 177 of 200 uh, kcal per mole, and this one from 177 to 182. So the center of this potential will be at centered at 177. Okay. Well, let's hope it works. <laughs> we are more or less, let's see. So now another no. thing. Yes. Uh, sorry, just a, a quick comment, especially for the for the people that are in YouTube, because I, I, I don't think they have access to this uh, umbrella.sh script, right? I believe that so because uh, it's in the tutorial. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, it's that's it's in the tutorial. Oh, okay. So okay, so everything is. I is, think is, that, uh, yes. They, co they co copy paste it. And, oh, okay, okay, cool. So actually, for the people in YouTube, the only thing which I believe I forgot to mention at the beginning of the lecture, is that afterwards we will be doing the weighted histogram analysis, which is here in this folder one. And in order to run this, you need the, the one script, which you can download it from internet, I think so. Please. This is code. Yes, this one. I think it, I don't know if we wrote it in the in the actually in the website to download this one or this uh, one. But let's say that this is the program developed in order to then have a better analysis of our umbrella sampling and therefore extract the uh, unbiased free energy from this biased. Uh, probability distribution that we will be having since we are applying a constraint with the, uh, the harmonic potential. Okay, I will not go in depth into the maths of this. I think uh, Juanco already did it in the, in the lecture. So better if you rewatch the lecture rather than listening to me for this. And uh, yes. So in case uh, now I will introduce you to this uh, weighted histogram analysis, but I think the, the program is really, really easy to install. I think it was one of the first time that I installed the program and didn't give any errors. So in case you can do this second part, you can observe it now live and then do the second part once you install the program in, in case you did not have it installed. So, Let's see where we are. Okay, we are reaching almost the end because we are because we started at 180. If you have any other questions. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, for me it's done. Let's wait another minute for uh, for the other people, uh, both in my computer and in the Gustavo's computer, and uh, and then we will continue and we will be looking at some uh, distributions. So to sum up, what we're doing right now is uh, doing an MD simulation at each. Uh, at each constrained dihedral angle. Okay. Ah, another small thing, it's not related to the tutorial of today, but uh, if you remember last time, the orca dot in uh, for the QMM calculation gave an error, probably because I installed orca in my computer, so we didn't have permission with this uh, tutorial uh, user. So since uh, next time, in the next tutorials, Gustavo will be doing QMM, and we will be seeing directly next time how to run the simulation with the QMM because uh, I believe that there was no point now at the beginning of the lecture to run the simulation and start another tutorial since we will be doing this next time. Yeah, we're, we're gonna start the next uh, tutorial uh, with the, the QMMM uh, simulation of, the, of your last step. So yeah, I, I think I, I'm, I will install Orca in the exact same location as uh, in my PC, also in your PC so that Everybody yeah, can yeah, it. yeah. Probably, uh, yeah. In case mm -hmm. we move the Orca to the lo user local bin, yeah, exactly. Executables mm -hmm. because in, I think it, since they were in my compute in my in a random folder, we can we could not execute the the command. Yep. So, if you are all done, I can continue. I see that there is still uh, one one thunder. Uh, there is also a question in the YouTube channel. I'm gonna copy it in the chat. It's, uh, yeah, it's also quite interesting. Uh, Let's see. This is okay, from uh, Gavin Deep Sign. Can you please reiterate the significance of putting restraints to the dihedral angle of, of the ligand? So, um, okay. So the first time that we actually added the, the restraint, no. Okay, I'm sorry, Danilo will first uh, uh, answer the first question. So the first, so we actually have placed the, first of all, for the first, uh, a simulation just I wanted to show you how to actually do a restraint calculation then the idea of putting a restraint in this case is that uh, in order to go from a point a to a point b uh, we need to define a reaction coordinate that in which we will be running the sequential simulations in this case our reaction coordinate uh, uh, lambda will be the, our dihedral, which will go from 180 to zero uh, in 60 sequential steps. So in 60 windows, those are the famous windows that we uh, listened in the lecture. So the idea is to run a simulation at each window and obtain a probability distribution of our uh, dihedral, okay? Now, in order to then extract the information regarding the free energy of the going from A to B, which in this case is going from 180 to zero, is to extract the probability to get the probability distribution of the intersections between the simulations. Because from these uh, points, from these uh, uh, windows, in the intersected windows, we will actually extract the real uh, Almonds or almonds or Gibbs free energy, depending on our our ensemble. And then, uh, Danilo, how long should they propagate the real dynamics to get accurate results? This is a good question. Uh, I believe that uh, in this case, I think we run only two picoseconds. It will not be enough to have a good, very good estimate. Probably, we will obtain 
a good potential energy surface, but not a really good one. So I don't know. For this system, uh, what Gustavo, what do you think for a system of this size? What is a good estimate? What what could be a good uh, length of a simulation, or even? Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is not so large system now. Of course, uh, uh, it it depends, but but in principle, uh, you should go between at least ten. To 20 nanoseconds per, per window but of, but of course you you it it depends i mean you really have to try and see uh up to one what point uh do you get a rather smooth potential uh, potential of mean force and uh and yeah so, so you have you have to 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 more or less uh, try uh, different values uh, you also study in principle the, the, the convergence of the simulation in a sense to see that uh, up to what point does the, the curve no longer change anymore? Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, yeah, I think it was the the, 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 the alarm. Of ah, the alarm. Time. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, Did because you I, I, I removed my headphones, but I was still hearing the sound. Yeah, yeah, no, it was here in, in <laughs> the God, it's, it's my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's for the time being, it's not your head. <laughs> okay, 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 very good. Um, so, yeah, of course, you, you could start, like, for example, say five nanoseconds per window, then you can start seeing like uh, truncating uh, the simulation from below, that is, uh, to take away the first few uh, nanoseconds of simulation and see whether the curve changes or not, uh, depending on the intervals you're taking. And if you see that it still changes a lot, for example, when you consider the first, the, the last four and the last three nanoseconds, you extend the simulation further, like to, to 10 nanoseconds. Uh, the good thing with Amber is that you can actually do that and you can start from the restart file and then uh, continue the simulation. So, so you have to, to, to try it out eventually. There's no magic number, that's it. Yeah. Okay. I believe I can continue. So first of all, a fast way to see whether our probability distributions in each window actually have intersected, we can plot the dihedral uh, files. So we do X, X, M grace of the dihedral from, let's see if it works, from 180 to zero every three dot out. So in principle, this should be plotting all the files. And so in principle, it's better if you do it with histograms, but I think this was the fastest way to do it right now. And if we observe this graph, it's a big mess, but in the same time, we can see that there is actually intersection between the neighboring windows. Like for example, here between this, the first one and the, uh, the red one. So between the black and the red, we see that there is points of intersection, not throughout the full pathway. So if we will be running this simulation for much longer, we will be having a much better uh, intersection. Also, the idea should be that if you increase, for example, the force constant, you will have a less uh, less oscillation around the value of 180. So instead of being as we saw before, that it still oscillates by three four degrees. If we increase the force constant, we will have probably an oscillation of a, a one degree. And in that case, let's say what we want to do is to increase even more the amount of windows. So in case in this case, instead of taking it every 60, we would take it every one uh, uh, degree. Okay. okay. Yes, one second. I will, okay. So how do we choose the reaction coordinate? This is a very good question because suppose if we have a bigger ligand molecule, how do we choose the reaction coordinate and where do we place the restraint? So this really depends on what you're looking for. So in principle, uh, for, uh, 
for enhanced sampling techniques, there is the, the first divergence between techniques is among the uh, reaction coordinate dependence, dependent method in which you actually choose uh, a reaction coordinate and you bias this reaction coordinate in order to extract the information of your system. But these and the examples are umbrella sampling or metadynamics, for example, in which you, uh, you boost the full potential of the, you boost the potential of your uh, reaction coordinate. And there is uh, unconstrained, so actually uh, enhanced sampling methods where you don't choose a reaction coordinate. And the, the, some examples are the accelerated dynamics method or Gaussian accelerated uh, molecular dynamics. And uh, yeah, I don't know many other of them. There is a lot of enhanced sampling techniques. So the choice of the reaction coordinates, and unfortunately, is something that uh, you should be should be a chemical intuition intuition of the person. Therefore, you cannot actually uh, say uh, like, there is not nothing yet. I believe that uh, chooses for you the reaction coordinates depending on the science that you want to do. So yeah, for. Yes. Vito, Vito, there is just a comment. Uh, there are also some techniques which are more complex, which are based in, in machine learning algorithms where you can define the reaction coordinate in an automatic way. But this is only possible if you have, a, let's say, a simulation uh, which already explore the, let's say, the, the reactive pathway. The reactive so you have, pathway. A, yeah, you have a simulation uh with a good sampling and these algorithms uh analyze the simulation in, in order to extract the reaction code right? okay you, as you said you you need to have already some previous knowledge somehow yes. otherwise you cannot use umbrella sampling yeah okay yeah i think i read the paper of uh, parinello probably maybe i can uh, i can put a link where they, they were actually doing this and uh, automata trying to automatize uh, or at least finding um, a collective variable, uh, an automatized way to find this collective variable or reaction coordinate. Maybe I can put the link in the in the comments of this paper. All right. So uh, what were we doing? We actually just right now observed our dihedral uh, distribution. So now, before we actually run the final step, which will be the discovery of our potential of mean force with the, this weighted histogram analysis technique. Let's appreciate the system and try to visualize it. Therefore, so in order to make it more simple for CPP trajectory to uh, recognize the, the coordinate file, I have uh, placed them instead of going from 180 to zero. Let's see how they look. So they go from, uh, from one to 60. Since CPP trajectory, if we see them now with this LS, we will see, we see that it first sees the number 10, then the number one. So the decimal numbers, so basically it will not go, it will not read from one to 60, but it will read a bit different. For example, the one is here, the two is here and, and so on. First of all, let's change the numbers from one to nine to zero one to zero nine. We can do this with the for loop for e in one to nine. We do move the md dollar e dot md crd to md zero dollar e dot md c c r d okay i think it works done now let's do it again ls no ls of only md crd and now we see that actually even uh, the bash uh, will uh, recognize the the numberings going from one to 60. so now we can do it with the, we can read them with cpp trajectory 
So we open the CPP trajectory. We um, we load the uh, our topology file. Now, in the tutorial, I believe that I also here I created a for loop, but I think that uh, in this case we can just read with uh, the trajectory without using the for loop, so we we'll make things less complicated. So we do traj in md all dot md crd, or actually no, let's do it like this dot md crd okay wait i will zoom so we're telling to load all the trajectory which finish with md crd okay and uh, since i i think there will be 200 uh, 2000 frames for each uh, trajectory let's Wait, let's just check how many. So let's take it every 10 so that at least we have 200 for each uh, trajectory. So 200 multiplied by 60, we have, uh, at least we don't have uh, more than 10,000 frames and we can, we will be faster at visualizing. So we, can, we do this. Actually, no, there were 200. So 200. Uh, so it, if we do 200 by 60, it will be at 12,000. So let's let's get it every 10 steps. Let's exit and redo everything again. CPP trajectory, traj in, let's get from one to 200 every 10. So that we have 20 frames each, uh, um, uh, Vito, it's trajectory. Me, yes. Uh, I, I think you forgot to put the system part seven first. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Dot part seven. Very good. Thank you very much. Then traj in dot md crd from one to 200 every uh, 10, or let's do every five, okay, so that we have 40 for each. Uh, simulation. So let's see. Okay, very good. Is reading them all of them from one to sixty, and now we do the auto image just to be sure, and we center our molecule. Okay, and then we do trudge out, and we call it final dot crd for example. Okay, and then we play. We press go. Now it's three. It's basically reading forty uh, frames every uh, trajectory. So let's exit and let's finally open it with BMD. So at least we see something. So first of all, we load the system dot farm seven. Okay, it's already recognized by BMD. And then we open the, so we should go to the F. There's too many files. Echo of final.crd. And please change to periodic box. Wait, I will zoom again. I know oh, I cannot zoom. EMD. So please click this periodic box because otherwise it will not be visualizable. And let's load the system. Okay. If you want to loading faster, if you remove the representation, it will load faster, you see? Okay. So let's find a way to actually uh, appreciate the rotation of this dihedral. So let's see. First of all, let's do orthographic. This, okay, we're, we're starting at zero. So then here we do rest name mole what's happening ah i didn't select the rest name mole Peter, when you when you can there are a couple of questions ah yeah okay In the... uh, okay 
well, let's finish this visualization and then I will answer to the question. Okay, so this is our starting frame. It's not fully planar in this frame that we have taken, but uh, it's okay. So now if we visualize it like this, it's really, no, wait, I pressed. If you visualize it like this, it will not be really nice to visualize. See? Therefore, what we should do first is to is remove the, as we did the, probably the last time, we should remove the rotation and, uh, and translation of our ligand. So I don't know why this trajectory tool is really so, wait. So here we, we write. Res name mole, and we align it. Let's go to the first frame, and we align it. Okay. Now, now at least we removed. If we see, we removed the translation. Okay. Now we can also do. If we click here now in trajectory, we can also smoothen up the window, which means uh, that basically. It will not, I believe that it will skip some frames in such a way that uh, it will not take uh, every two femtoseconds, so the movement will be smoother, I think. But let's see uh, how it is. Let's put 30. Okay, now it's better. We can visualize it. Yeah, I think what it does is some kind of interpolation along the, the reaction pathway, so it's... Uh... Okay. It actually kind of uh, creates points between uh, your grid of points, so that that's why it's, it looks smoother. Okay. So we don't have to think. Uh, let's not uh, think about the rotation of the of the benzene, but let's only keep in mind the rotation of the, our central, we are, we, where we actually arrive to a cis conformation. Of course, this is not the real cis conformation because, in principle. They should be phasing, they should be like this, but in this case, they're like this. But this is due to the small amount of uh, uh, sampling and also probably to the force field. Vito, probably, probably if you align, if you remove uh, the translation and rotation of only one benzene moiety, maybe you see a, a nice rotation, right? Okay. I, don't know. I didn't, I, I never tried it, but just, just yeah, to never try. Tried. <laughs> So, so here I should do index. Um, I have to know what are the, so in principle, uh, yeah. Yeah, we should check in the PDB what are the names. We will do it uh, later. I don't know, I've never done, let's see if index one works. Align. Yeah, now it's much better. Like I think this way I did the uh, index one. So I just, uh, we should be, which in principle should be one of the atoms of the azobenzene. Okay, so let, if we see. Yeah. Okay. So we saw now the rotation. So at least it, it rotated throughout the bond. So now we can exit again BMD. Now we can conclude by uh, running this WAM program. So first of all, we need to copy all the files called uh, dihedral.out inside of WAM. So we do, we do copy dihedral from 180 to, what was it? Zero every three dot out into WAM. Oh, the hydral zero, it's not there, okay. So in principle now, if the hydral zero is not there, let's see if it will work because maybe it's missing one uh, frame. So from zero to, one second, ls dot, 
the, yeah, there is no dihedral dot zero. So let's see if it will work in case I will take one frame less in the one. Anyways, okay, so now we have this, uh, um, we have he, here we have our create method of Perl, which is, a, this is a script that I've actually taken from the Amber uh, file, uh, from the Amber tutorials. And uh, let's see what it does. Basically, it will print, it will print out uh, a starting file for the WAM uh, uh, project, for the WAM uh, system. Therefore, let's do, let's do it. Okay, so it printed. So let's see, it processed all those dihedrals. And it created this meta dot dot, okay? Now, in this situation, like I'm suspicious because since we don't have this dihedral zero dot out, maybe we now we're for the one we should is better if we go from 180 to three. I don't know for some reason didn't do the final. No, we don't have it. Anyways, so what what it printed is this one. Okay. So in principle, uh, uh, this file could also be created. In, uh, in, different, in different ways. So let's create it, for example, okay, let's copy this, for example, and let's try to do for E in 180 to zero every three. So Vito, what have you done to, to get this method dot there, that, sorry. So I, I've compute, I've run the, this simulation, this create meta dot Perl, okay? Which is basically a script that I found in the Amber uh, tutorial to create this meta file, which basically this meta file will be used by the, uh, the weighted histogram analysis program to generate the PMF. But now maybe I will, since um, I don't know where I actually, Okay, yeah, this is the tutorial, yes. But in principle, like I wanted to show you that you can also uh, uh, obtain this file. Let's remove the, the meta, for example. Let's do for E in 180 to zero every three. Do, now we do echo, echo, or echo. Now we want dihedral, we want to print dihedral dollar, where is the dollar? Dollar E dot out. Then we want, what was it? It was dollar E dot zero. And then our first constant. Let's see if I still have it here. Okay. Then done. So it printed the same file. So you see, this is exactly as the meta Perl uh, script. So in principle, you can either use this file or you can also do this for loop and just print this. Uh, then you, yeah, then uh, either you, no, I didn't call, I didn't uh, say the output. So you just copy and do meta dot dot. And now you will have this, okay. Okay, can you show me the last line of your for? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, now uh, let's do the for okay. loop, but see, now I, I just thought about it. The, the one program doesn't go from 180 to zero, but goes from zero to 180. So it's better if we go from zero to 180, okay? So this is the for loop, okay? So we, it's, uh, it's telling us for, uh, for a variable going from zero to 180 every three. So it's doing 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Let's do, let's print me the dihedral dollar $E dot out. So dihedral zero dot out. Then print me dollar $E dot zero. So like this, ta, 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 like here, 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 and then print me the force constant. Okay. Then done, all right. And it printed this. Now let's save it. I, again, I forgot, but let's save it. So we copy. Yeah, meta dot dot. And 
Oh, no, okay, it's already here. So let's remove method of that. And let's copy it again, but starting from zero to 180. Okay. So this is the file that we should have, okay? And now we should, uh, we should use this weighted histogram analysis program. First, let's write one and execute and see if it actually works. So it's telling us what are the variables that we could use with this uh, one. So it principally should work. Also try in Gustavo's computer, and uh, so which is the the two four four three seven. Uh, yeah, is the other one. So okay. Now, in order to run it, I think it's. I've wrote in the tutorial the meaning of each of those line. So uh, one P uh, defines that the reaction coordinate is periodic. Then we go from zero, but let's see, in this case, we don't have a zero. So let's go from three to 180 every, uh, so uh, in 60 steps. Let's see if it works. Otherwise, so we will do the final simulation of uh, 0 0.01. 300 meta dot dot results dot result dot dot. So let's see if I do 59. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, I forgot the zero here. So it's reading 61 windows. So number of windows 61. So let's try it. So there is, you see now it's missing the. Uh... Vito, you need to delete from the meta file the line. With the ah, of, of course, yes, that's true. Yeah, because uh, still I still I printed it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for some reason the limit. Uh, yeah, I think before I had uh, in the previous in the script of uh, umbrella I had the limit to sixty one and not sixty. So in principle now if I delete it I also should like this now it should work. Yes, it worked. So what this program did, it printed this result dot dot, which printed the free energy, the probability distribution, the coordinates. So in order to uh, actually run, run it, let's print this line and this line, okay? And uh, sorry, let's extract them and then uh, print them and plot them especially so we do uh, for example cut result dot dot and this will take you take me this so result dot dot then we do oak in this case we 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 can tell oak to print us only the column one and column two okay and we print it in a new file called pmf dot dot okay so let's check if we print it correctly. Okay, so we have the first and the second line. So XM Grace PMF dot dot. Okay. I find I found the mistake. Actually, let's do print maybe comma. <laughs> Otherwise, it will be just one number. Okay. Sorry. Uh, are you following? I. Maybe confused in the last in the last five minutes, but now everything should be working now. So let's do again this uh, this command in order to extract our uh, uh, two columns. Let's look again. Okay, now they are distant, so there is actually a line a distance here. Now let's print it. The, let's plot the PMF dot dot. Okay, so let's observe it. So what we actually see is, in principle, uh, this is what we were. I was expecting 
since I had prior knowledge on the trans on the auto benzene because the minima so the the thermal uh, uh, thermally let's say uh, the dark state of our azo benzene is the the trans state so the minimum uh, is the trans then we see a transition state around 90 degrees in principle should be around 90 degrees now due to the like the the low amount of the, the short simulation that we did actually it's uh, it's a bit shifted and also you can see that it's not actually a really nice smooth line and then this one should correspond to the minimum of our trans of our cis state so in principle even with this small uh, amount of uh, data and with these short simulations we obtained uh, a potential of mean force which has some physical meaning of course in order to have really good data both energetically and also of the the position of the the minimas we should run for long uh, for a longer time but at least we uh, extracted some data and we obtained something meaningful so this is uh, i think let's see now i think that now that i created this pmf in principle the tutorial is over it was a bit more than two hours, I'm sorry. I promised two hours, but uh, uh, yeah. So at this point, uh, there were some questions. Uh, so the first question, so the first question of Caio, uh, was what is the point of using that number of windows? Could we use a smaller force constant for an harmonic potential and less windows? Yes, uh, but in principle, uh, let's say that if you have, uh, I think, I believe that if you have a larger amount of windows, you have a smoother, uh, let's say you can capture all the physics of the full, sim of the full pathway and also observe uh, I, be, I think that uh, you will observe a better uh, potential energy surface. Quanco, if you have to add something, please do. Yes. Uh, so the question is, what is we, the point of using that number of windows? Uh -huh. and, we will use yeah. this one. Okay. So this is yeah this is a good question can we use a smaller force constant uh, in a in a smaller number of windows so indeed the answer is in general i will say no and i will i will explain myself i will share the screen one moment okay with the two yes yes of course i will remove yeah can you can you share it even if mine is shared yes 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 okay I think so. So you, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. So okay. Lo, so let's say we have here so our potential energy profile or the free energy profile, uh, the one you prefer, uh, against the reaction coordinate. So and we have something like like this, as you know. So we have a big barrier. This is why we are using umbrella sampling. And okay, I will change the color. As you know, we are dividing the reaction coordinate in different windows. Okay, so okay, for example, up to here. And now we are applying a a bias potential. And now the question is, can we apply a bias potential? So as you know, the bias potential is just a, a harmonic one, right? So it's just the, the reaction coordinate minus the reaction coordinate in the equilibrium value we, we choose uh, to the power of two. So uh, this value of the reaction coordinate, the equilibrium one, is the value where the, the bias potential is centered. So for example, if we are in this window, this is, for example, our equilibrium value. And if we choose a bias potential with a a small force constant, then the curvature will be small, as we know, right? So we're going to have something like that, for example. 
Okay, this is a, a, a small curvature harmonic potential, right? And if you remember, the harmonic potential will stop here because we define these limits in the in the input file. So Vito today show you the input file for the umbrella sampling, and you need to define here the the initial uh, reaction coordinate value and the final one, right? Okay. If we have if we choose such a, a potential with a small curvature, so the barrier to to leave the window is just this one. Right, so we are in the minimum, and the maximum energy is this one. Right, so if you run a simulation with such a, a small force constant, the molecule will likely jump over this small barrier and come back to the minimum. Okay, so this is why uh, we need uh, a larger force constant here. So if we choose, if you choose here a larger force constant, then we are going to have. Uh, let me choose another color, green. We are going to have something like that. I will exaggerate a bit. And now, uh, so the, the molecule, in order to leave the window, it has to jump this very large barrier. And this will never happen, of course. And then the, the molecule will be trapped here in this, uh, in this window. And this is our goal. So this is why, uh, so it's impossible to know the ideal value for the force constant and the ideal value for the number of windows at the beginning. So you need to try. The goal is to choose the smallest possible force constant, as you suggest, but still uh, the simulation should be able to, to sample the reaction coordinate. So it cannot be too small. And the, the only way to, to choose the values is try different combinations, okay? So you start with a particular value of the force constant, and if you see, uh, the reaction doesn't happen, then you increase the value of the force constant. But since you are increasing this value, you need to also increase the number of windows. And you need to try. Test and yeah, trial error. That's the, the, the only way. But you can, as I said, you cannot choose a very small value because otherwise the system will leave the, the window. OK? So that's the thing. The microphone is off, Vito. I think then. Uh... So, Vito, the, there was also. A question before saying that uh, so somebody said uh, if you have a, a large ligand how do you choose the reaction coordinate and okay yeah no we we answered uh, before like it was ah, about, okay okay yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, i didn't realize okay okay yeah yeah then i believe uh danilo uh, if i run a long simulation will i still have this dot not non i think this is for the that's the statistical analysis i think i think so it will only yeah. print the free energy and the probability distribution, yes. Maybe this those... Is, uh, yeah, please. Sorry. No, this is related with... Uh, so the, the one method can also compute, the one algorithm can also compute the... the two dimensions. An estimation of the error, an estimation of the error of your profile using one statistical method, which is called Monte Carlo Bootstrap, which uh, is able to, to estimate the error from your data. So if you put zero as Vito, you are saying that you don't want this statistical analysis. So you, you don't care about the, the statistical analysis. And this is why the program prints uh, none. It's not related with the length of the simulation. I'm going to write here in the chat uh, Monte Carlo bootstrap in case uh, somebody's interested in reading about it. This is how 
one uh, calculate an estimation of the error of your profile. Okay. Then, yeah, so to conclude, in the meantime, uh, as always, I want to provide some references because uh, I think it's also nice to read. So, and, sorry, Vito. Yes. Somebody, somebody in the chat say, if you can repeat again the one comment, that probably ah, yes, they, can see, they can see it again in the, in the video, but yeah, you can yes, do no, it. No, let's, you want, you want. Yeah. So actually, let's do it. Uh, so in the PDF, uh, first of all, that you can download as well, there is, uh, for each command, there is the explanation of what is the command, but I will go back to the, to the one. So this is the, we add the periodicity. Then we go from uh, three degrees for our uh, reaction coordinate to 180, okay, every 60. Then, uh, this is the tolerance for uh, reconstructing the potential of mean force. This is the temperature of our simulation. And then this zero, this is the, the reason why there was this dot NAN. This is the, that performs the statistical analysis. Then it, it needs an input file, which in this case is our meta dot dot that we saw that we can create with our Perl script or with the simple for loop that uh, you will be able to see it in this video. And, and then it will print out the result to those that will be, we should, which will be the output of the simulation of this, uh, sorry, of the program. So, okay, then, yeah. If there is any other question, please ask. And yeah, I was saying that uh, this is, uh, a really good paper. It's more. It's more general. It's also have a great division, uh, as I said before, between uh, reaction coordinate uh, dependent enhanced sampling method and uh, free of reaction coordinate enhanced sampling method, so that you can actually understand what is the meaning of it. And uh, because uh, okay, Quank also put the link of the the one manual in the. In the the chat. Actually, probably maybe we can you can put it also in the the YouTube uh, chat. And uh, so in this paper, it's really it's a fantastic summary. It's also it's really nice, really really nice. Then the if you want, I can send you also papers regarding also another other enhanced sampling methods also related with some uh, applications. So there is some papers regarding. Uh, for example, metadynamics with an application. So each or uh, replica exchange with an application temperature. Uh, um, and so, and then the here I also put the link, sorry, of a book. This is a nice book, which goes from, uh, it's more for the understanding of statistical thermodynamics in case you still didn't have the course or well, for whatever reason, which is a really small book. I think is uh, 70 pages which goes from the beginning, so from the concept of partition function until the equilibrium constant. So this is a really simple book. It's not, uh, should have a little bit of prior knowledge, but I think this is a really, it's a really, it's the best connection that we have for uh, going from a partition function to a chemical uh, constant. So an equilibrium constant. And yes. And wait, I will, I will be here in case you want to, probably maybe I can also add these slides, but uh, yeah, they're not so meaningful, but. Uh, can you, is, Vito, can, can you add the, somebody is asking if you can write the name of the book in the chat? Ah, yes. Maybe in you the can chat of, of what, of which chat? Of uh, YouTube? The, no, they're here in, ah, okay, okay. in Zoom, in Zoom. Yes, one second. No, it's, it's, it's called statistical thermodynamics. Statistical. Ther 
Yeah, because I don't have the so Oxford Oxford University, and then I will write maybe the name of one of the guys. I think if you can I, can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, yesterday you explained to us why we can take the Farm Seven. Uh, uh, file and carry it throughout the calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain again why that? Ah, okay, yes. So let's go back to a less crowd folder. For example, the minimization one. Okay. And let's open our Parm 7. So, first of all, as I said, uh, with TLIP, we generate, we we generate from our uh, files of the ligand, which have, uh, we source the force fields and uh, we solvate the system and we create two files, which are the parameter files, which if we open it, it contains all the informations about our system, which are the atom types, the charge, the Lennard-John uh, parameters, the bonding parameters, the non-bonding parameters, well, for example, it's right charge so this file contains everything but is missing the coordinates so it's actually describing a system which does not actually exist because does not have coordinates so no actually is the it contains all the information but not the only thing is missing is the uh, xyz files of our uh, system plus i think also the periodic box which i don't i believe is also not here for for such a reason uh, we can use this system.parm7 file which is our topology file to apply and apply it to any simulation which contains uh, a trajectory file or a restart file with the same amount of atoms and the same um, and the, with the same connectivity as well okay so in principle, we can use this as we did now. We use this system dot farm seven in the in the at the beginning in the minimization with this system dot rst, but can also be applied to all the other files that we have generated because they have the same uh, x y the same amount of atoms. Okay. So those are the two fundamental files, and uh, instead the PDB contains uh, the minimal amount of information in order to define a system, okay? So because we here, for example, in the PDB, we don't have uh, the bond uh, bonding information. We don't have, we have anything, nothing related to energetics, okay? And nothing related to, uh, uh, yeah, in general, nothing related to the force field, okay? So this is the minimal uh, file which we use in order for visualization and for recognition of the system itself. But if we want to simulate and apply a force field to such a system, we require a topology file, okay? Okay, thank you. No problem. I think there is no more questions. Okay. Uh, not, not, not in the YouTube channel and also not here. Let, let's wait some seconds because the YouTube yep. channel has a, a, always a bit of delay. Yes. And Mariana will send you the papers now. <laughs> I think I sent them to Gabriela <laughs> by mistake. And uh, yeah, I got okay, confused. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Okay, Anyways, so I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah say. Final thing, like for more practice, uh, please visit the Amber uh, tutorials because uh, 
they are similar to what we have done, uh, but you can also do many more things, let's say. And also, uh, instead of repracticing this tutorial, you can always do the same thing that we're doing, but with different systems, okay? Because sometimes if you recreate the same tutorial, you have the, the memory that is uh, like, yeah, it's better to start from uh, an unknown system if you want to practice the, the software itself. Yeah, so that's it. So nothing. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, yeah, next two, two, two tutorials will be Gustavo explaining you a lot of nice stuff. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, well, the, the, the first things were also really nice. <laughs> it, it's different <laughs> stuff, QM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, before stopping the the session in YouTube, maybe we can remind people in the YouTube channel that the, for the next sex sessions, uh, Gustavo, they need to install the mobile tools, right? Yeah, they, they also yeah. need to, to, to have installed the mobile tools. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's quite easy to install as well. Uh, so. Okay, maybe yeah, I will copy the, the link in the YouTube channel because then they have it. Yeah. Second. Okay, yeah. mobile tools. And also Orca. I and also Orca. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Also, also Orca. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Vito. So these are the two extra programs we're gonna we're gonna record for the next two uh, exercises. Okay. So mobile tools and, and Orca. I will also copy the link of Orca. Uh, all this information is in our website, but uh, yeah, just in case. So here is yeah here it is the link of Orca. And anyway, I copy again in the chat of the channel the link to our website where all the information of the course is. Okay. Great. Yep. Okay, so yeah. So if you want to say goodbye, I will stop the the, the yeah. Road <laughs> <laughs> have, have a nice Thank weekend. you very much. Thank you very you much, too, everyone. Have a nice weekend. You. Yes, see you next time. Yeah, and let's enjoy it. Aria, for you, it's morning. <laughs>